my information to uh, uh, Guru Maharaj, did you send an email Guru Maharaj? yeah I think I did um, there's a link on the email and it's for tomorrow's program which yes, is a sir. special program with the devotees from India it mm -hmm. starts at 7.30 their time which would be um, two o'clock in UK time. Yes, good much, but uh, yeah, yes, good much, I got the email, yes. Okay, the link is there, you can send it out. And I think yes, I included the topic is association with devotees. Yeah, yes, good much. Sure, good much, I'll do that, thank you. Okay, um, I had forgotten that I had uh, given this topic as the topic for today's class. I was thinking of speaking on something different. Um, let's, uh, well, health is a very important subject matter. I may occasionally um, broach the subject in order to uh, refresh the devotees in the importance of uh, doing the needful and taking care of one's health because it's essential for the execution of one's devotional service. So um, would you like to speak on that topic or the other topic I was gonna speak on is the qualities of the great souls. Mm -hmm. So, so, so how do we choose Guru Maharaj? Um, uh, should we devotees? Uh, which one would you like to health? Sri Devi Mataji said health. Sri Devi, anybody else? Let's see. I would like to hear about the qualities of the great souls, <laughs> but let's see what everyone says. Yeah, Archana okay. Siddhi Mataji says quality. Diptesh Prabhu said qualities of pure and disciples. Yes, devotees. Okay. All right. It's also from a verse. From, we'll, we'll get to the health program uh, as soon because I want to present that in such a, uh, a rounded way that I completely uh, cover all areas. So we'll postpone that for a later date. Okay. So the verse today is the 16th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, verse number one which includes verses two and three together. I'll share the link on my screen. Bhagavad well, Gita chapter 16, verse number one through three. Okay, um, there are, it's, it's quite long in the Sanskrit. Sri Bhagavan Uvacha Bayam Sattva Sam Siddhir Jnana Yoga Vavasti Tihi Dana Dhamma Sri Yogyas Cha Swadayasya Tapa Arjavam Ahim Sam Satya Akrodas Tvaja Santim Apai Sunam Dayam Bhute Shavalo Lutam Marda Mardavam Re Chapalam Teja Shamadrita Shalcham Adroho Natamanita Bhavanti Sampadam Daivim Avicha Tasya Bhavata. Um, translation The Supreme Personality of God had said, Fearlessness, purifications of one's existence. Cultivation of spiritual knowledge, charity, self-control, performance of sacrifice, study of the Vedas, austerity, simplicity, nonviolence, truthfulness, freedom from anger, renunciation, tranquility, aversion to fault, finding compassion for all living entities, freedom from covetedness, gentleness, modesty, steady determination, vigor, forgiveness, fortitude, cleanliness, and freedom from envy and the passion 
for honor. These transcendental qualities of son of Bart belong to God. Men died with the divine nature. Hmm. So you see in this uh, series of qualities that are mentioned here, you have both uh, things, qualities that are developed and you have a type of and renunciation of other types of qualities. Again, for instance, you have um, austerity, which is a, a renunciation. Uh, you have freedom from anger. We have renunciation, aversion, aversion to false fighting, freedom from covetedness. Uh, you have uh, forgiveness, freedom from envy and a passion for honor. These are things that one rejects <laughs> and the rest are one accepts. There's a very long purport and we'll take the, ver we'll take the qualities as they come in the purport. So Prabhupada begins in the beginning of the 15th chapter, the band entry of this material world is explained. The extra roots coming out of it were compared to the activities of the living entities, some auspicious, some inauspicious. The ninth chapter also the devas or godly, the asuras and the ungodly or demons were explained. Now, according to Vedic rites, activities in the mode of goodness are considered auspicious the progress on the path of liberation and such activities are known as daivi prakriti, transcendental by nature. Those who are situated in the transcendental nature make progress on the path of liberation. For those who are acting in the mode of passion and ignorance, on the other hand, there is no possibility of liberation. Either they will have to remain in this material world as human beings, or they will descend among the species of animals or even lower life forms. In the 16th chapter, the Lord explains both the transcendental nature and the intended qualities and the demoniac nature and its qualities. He also explains the advantages and disadvantages of these qualities. The word abhijatasya in reference to one born in transcendental qualities of godly tendencies is very significant. To begin a child in a godly atmosphere is known as in the Vedic scriptures as Garbhodana Samskara. If parents want a child in godly qualities, they should follow the 10 principles recommended for the social life of the human being. In Bhagavad Gita, we have studied also before that sex life for beginning a good child is Krishna himself. Sex life is not condemned provided the process is used in Krishna consciousness. There are those in Krishna consciousness at least should not beget children like cats and dogs, but should beget them so that they may become Krishna conscious after birth. That should be the advantage of children born of a father and mother absorbed in Krishna consciousness. The social institution known as Varashram Dharma, the institution divided society into four divisions of social life. Uh, let's see. And four occupational divisions or castes is not meant to divide human society according to birth. Such divisions are in terms of educational qualifications. They are to be keep they are to keep the society in a state of peace and prosperity. The qualities mentioned herein are explained as transcendental qualities meant for making a person progress in spiritual understanding so that he can get liberated from the material world. In the last Vanashram institution, the sannyas, or the person in the renounced order of life, is considered to be the head of the spirit, head or the spiritual master of all social statuses and orders. A brahman is considered to be the spiritual master of the three other sections of society, namely the kshatriyas, vaishyas, and the sutras. But a sannyasi, who is on the top of the institution, is considered to be the spiritual master of the brahmins also. For a sannyasi, the first qualification should be fearlessness. Because the sannyasi has to be alone without any support or guarantee of support, 
He has simply to depend on the mercy of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. If one thinks, after I leave my connections, who will protect me? He should not accept the renounce of his life. One must be fully convinced that Krishna, or the Supreme Personality of Godhead, in his local aspect as Paramatma, is always within and that he is seeing everything and he always knows what one intends to do. One must have firm conviction that Krishna consciousness, that Krishna as Paramatma will take care of the souls surrendered to him. I shall never be alone, one should think. Even if I live in the darkest region of the forest, I shall be accompanied by Krishna. He will give me all protection. That conviction is called avayam, fearlessness. The state of mind is necessary for a person in their renounced order of life. Okay, so we have the first qualification, fearlessness. Mm -hmm. So uh, this material world is called uh, baya. Baya means fear. It's a place where everyone is fearful. From the highest living entity down to the lowest. Everyone has some element of fear. If one is not afraid of anything, still they are fearful of their own death. <clears throat> so this fear goes on as one of the main energies that pervades everyone's consciousness, just like we live in a very uh, overly fearful society today. It's the fear element is so strong in today's society that people are going to ridiculous levels of activities in order to somehow or other counteract this created fear that has come by way of propaganda. There are people who want you to be fearful and they're expert at increasing that. But fear is still everywhere within this material world. Um, the fear element now is, the, is probably the strongest element in society right now. It's so strong that we have uh, seen that uh, people will go against people they love because they're in a fearful situation created by a situation that causes them to become fearful. So fear uh, causes one to become confused. And when, when confusion is there, one cannot think or act properly. Therefore, one a tendency is to overact, make mistakes, or be so fearful that they cannot act at all. Um, fear means two. Two. Two in the sense that is there something outside of Krishna? Well, we hear in the in the scriptures that Krishna says, "Aham sarvasya prabhavo matat sarvam pavartan te iti matva bhajanti mam buddha bhava samandita." I am the source of all material worlds. Everything comes from me. The wise who know this engage in my devotional service. Who worship me with all their hearts. Krishna also emphasizes this principle in other sections of his speaking in Bhagavad Gita. He, he, he declares that he knows everything past, present, and future. And he also is, as he says, one who takes shelter of me, I give complete protection. So Krishna knows everything, and he can also give protection to those who take shelter of him. And that protection is complete on all levels. It's just not partial protection. Because Krishna is the all-powerful force within existence. And Rake Krishna Moreke, More Krishna Rakeke. If Krishna wants to kill someone, no one can do anything in any way to protect themselves. And if Krishna wants to protect one, no one in anywhere, no governments, no weapons, no atomic bombs, nothing can harm that person who takes shelter of Krishna because Krishna is the all-powerful controller. 
So when we refer to the uh, principle of two, we indicate that those who see duality can it will always be in a fearful condition. What does that mean? That there's no nothing outside of Krishna or Krishna's all pervasive and all controlling energy. He is Yogeshwar. He's the master of all mystic power. He he puts everything in place. He makes sure it acts according to how he puts it in place through his various angas or energies. His energies work completely under his control without the slightest deviation. And if he wants to protect one, one is fully protected. So um, fear comes by absorption in material life. The more one becomes absorbed in fulfilling material desires, the more the fear element rises. And it can go to such levels of fear that one can imagine things that are not even true. <laughs> Sometimes we see, we see how fear works on a very simple level. A person will be in the room, it'll be in the evening, and all of a sudden, all of the lights go out and one cannot see even his hand in front of his face. So one starts to become fearful. There's nothing to be fear, fearful of. One is in the same place, in the same environment they were a minute ago. But now I can't see, because I can't see, my mind creates this fear aspect and one starts to think in different ways. So this is how we see on a very simple level but people become fearful of so many things. And especially nowadays, people are fearful of each other. Um, and then one doesn't even trust another person or have any um, regard for others because the fear has become so strong that uh, it overtakes one's good sensibilities. Um, but as we mentioned, and this is important to understand, the principle of two means that one sees something outside of Krishna, but we know, as Krishna declares, uh, there is only him and his energies, and his energies work according to his control. So therefore, to see something outside of Krishna causes one to be fearful, therefore there is no fear for a devotee. And Prabhupada mentions here, particularly, he emphasizes the sannyasa in our life because he says the sannyasis have to be alone sometimes in such situations where they have no support and their only shelter is Krishna. And because they take shelter of Krishna, they become fearless even in a potentially fearful situation. Like that. Of course, one doesn't act foolishly and, and then could claim to be fearless. That is not fearlessness, that's foolishness. One acts according to the rules and regulations as given by, by the laws of material nature and uh, enunciated by Krishna through his various energies. And therefore one has to obey their general principles. And that is normal and that is natural. But one becomes, when, when one does that and at the same time takes shelter of Krishna, and one is completely over, over, over the element of fear. And as we say, fear, we see the example of Kamsa. Kamsa was so afraid of Krishna that, and he kept thinking that Krishna has come and he's going to kill me. His fear was so strong that when he would look in the mirror, he couldn't even see his own reflection. And he would see, he would imagine ghosts coming along and dragging his body. He would see holes in his own body. He would, his mind would cause so many delusions because of his fearfulness of Krishna. So that is the nature of fear. 
Um, but then again, does, is a devotee completely free from the element of fear? Yes, and then no. There is an aspect of fear that is healthy. It's called the healthy fear of Maya. What is that healthy fear of Maya? That here I am in the material world and I'm executing my devotional service. And I'm surrounded by uh, many opportunities to deviate and to become victimized by the material energy. Therefore, I should be very cautious and at the same very conscious of Krishna. So I don't fall again into the trap of the illusionary energy, which can at any point arise in a situation and try to captivate the living entity. So a devotee has what is called the healthy fear of again falling into the material energy. And then we take all precautions. That's why it says in the execution of devotional service, a devotee is conscious and cautious. And these two words go together in, as one principle. Conscious of Krishna and cautious not to act in such a way that, again, I'll be entrapped by the material energy. So that fear is considered to be good or healthy because it prevents one from acting in the wrong way or failing to take shelter of Krishna. So we see... Uh, and the whole world goes on simply as fear. Sometimes just a name, somebody's name will cause fear in the hearts of others. Some, when one sees a particular culture or race, they also may also become fearful. It's the fear element is so strong that people fail to act or fail to act properly or simply um, create so many disturbances based on this idea of fear. Wow. And I think what we have today is an overreaction to a situation which has caused unnecessary fear in, throughout the entire world uh, where we see people are so fearful that they're they're willing to, you know, imprison each other in order to become somewhat content. But as we mentioned, no one can protect themselves against the material energy unless Krishna gives that protection. So Prabhupada would use the example when a doctor is operating on a per patient. That doctor cannot save that person's life. The, doctor, the patient might think, I have the best doctors. I have the best medicine. I have the best cures. Everything is in line. I'll be all right. But no, the Krishna is the ultimate principle of everything. So therefore, one should always remember Krishna. And as it says here, a sannyasi has to be alone, sometimes in the more darkest regions of the forest. But he always feels protected because... He is taking shelter of Krishna. Now this is the this element of fear. The next one is then it says here, then he has to purify his existence. There is so many rules and regulations to be followed in the renowned sort of life. And most important, a sannyasi, again, there Prabhupada's focusing on this ashram. Uh, is strictly forbidden to have any intimate relationships with a woman, and even if it's for he is even forbidden to talk with a woman in a secluded place. Lord Chaitanya was an ideal sannyasi. When he was at Puri, his feminine devotees could not even come near to offer their respects. They were advised to bow down from a distant place. This is not a sign of hatred for women as a class, but a stricture imposed on the sannyasi, not to have close connections with women. One has to follow the rules and regulations of a particular status of life, that means ashram, in order to purify his existence. 
for sannyasi intimate relations with a woman in possession of wealth for sense gratification are strictly forbidden. The ideal sannyasi was Lord Chaitanya himself, and we can learn from his life that he was very strict in regards to women. Although he considered to be the most liberal incarnation of, of Godhead, accepting the most fallen conditioned souls, he, he strictly followed the rules and regulations of the sannyas order of life in connection with association with women. One of his personal associates, namely Chotar Haridas, was associated with Lord Chaitanya along with his other confidential associate. But somehow or other, uh, this Chotar Haridas looked lustily on a young woman, and Lord Chaitanya was so strict that he once rejected him from the side of his personal associates. Lord Chaitanya said, for a sannyasi, for anyone who is aspiring to get out of the clutches of material nature and trying to elevate himself, the spiritual nation, go back home, back to Godhead, for him looking towards material possessions and women for sense gratification, not even enjoying them, but just looking towards them with such propensity is so condemned that he better commit suicide before experience such illicit uh, desires. So these are the processes for purification. Of course, when Prabhupada said he should commit suicide, he later on was approached about that statement. And uh, he said, no, we don't recommend that. Uh, well, we do recommend that one, uh, 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 again, pick themselves up and follow their particular ashram uh, and make amends for whatever fall downs they have. But to actually commit suicide, this was brought up in a discussion with Srila Prabhupada and his devotees in one morning walk. And he was speaking in the same way until he was questioned about this and vaguely he says, he said, I am not Lord Chaitanya. Lord Chaitanya was strict. I am not Lord Chaitanya. And so um, uh, he qualified himself in saying, we don't commit suicide, but it, it is equal to committing suicide because one is killing their spiritual life if they, uh, if they go outside of this principle of proper association. Okay, and of course, um, sometimes we see in household life, um, devotees get a little bit loose, even in household life. Well, because I'm married and I have a wife, therefore I can also associate with other ladies. It doesn't matter because I'm in that Krihasta ashram. And sometimes we see that gets a little bit too uh, uh, extensive where people think, oh, well, he's a grihasta. If he's with a woman, that's okay. No, one should remain chaste to their ashram and also restrict their uh, association to their wife and whatever else is necessary to carry on devotional service but not in any way that will uh, cause one to become uh, affectionate or familiar with the opposite sex. So that also has to be understood. I see sometimes in our society, devotees take advantage of grihastas and they say, oh, well, you're a grihasta, you can talk to that lady there. But that's... Uh, that's, uh, we don't really uh, sometimes consider that, well, you know, you may be putting that person also in a situation where it becomes uh, uh, a very uncomfortable situation for them mm -hmm. and for the lady also. Okay, so. Um, what is our time? Uh, we are oh, we're three, minute, three minutes over our half hour mark. I wanted to dedicate this particular class 
to a person who inspired me to give this class, and that was Johnny Kinath Prabhu, who exhibited many of these qualities in an outstanding way. Uh, I was remembering his uh, association and remembering him in general and how much that he had these qualities, especially compassion for all living entities, determination in his devotional service, freedom from envy, freedom from the, the passion to become honored or respected. All of these more outstanding qualities was one of his, many of his ornaments in devotional service. His modesty, steady determination, his forgiveness. Uh, so many of these qualities remind me of him, his simplicity, truthfulness, uh, freedom from anger, all of these things uh, uh, brought my mind back to his association. And um, although he's been gone for us from our association for, well, now four months almost, the 17th of November would be four months. Um, we, will, we want to remember him in such a way that we remember the qualities and the characteristics that he exhibited in devotional service and also try to learn from him and imbibe those qualities. So in order to keep his memory alive, and I think many devotees want to do that also, we are, on, we are engaged on a project now to do a book in honor of Johnny Kinath, which we hope to release by the 17th of, of July, 2022, the one year anniversary date of his disappearance. And we would like to encourage, we would really like to encourage, strongly encourage each and every devotee who has any knowledge of him or any association with him or is inspired by him in any way to write something, to offer something, could be one line, two lines, some glorification. We want to make this book as um, voluminous as it can, with as many devotees remembering him in such a way that his memory will last because as, as you remember great souls, you also become Krishna conscious. They simply live for the benefit of others. And that's one of the qualities of, of Janaki Nath. He loved to serve others. And he was always trying to bring people to Krishna consciousness. One of the qualities here, compassion for all living entities was one of his outstanding qualities. I saw it so many times uh, in with me and with other devotees how he would uh, go out of his way to bring someone to Krishna consciousness. So um, this verse kind of reminds me of many of the qualities of this great personality who, although didn't stay for such a long time, only for 36 short years, he accomplished so much in that lifetime that uh, people's who, have, who were in association with him, so many of them would benefit eternally in their execution of devotional service. And many of the non-devotees also who came in contact with him. Okay, so we'll stop here and uh, go on to questions. Thanks, Guru Maharaj. Um, uh, devotees, if you have any questions, comments, realizations, uh, please unmute yourself and you can ask the questions or you can uh, type it in the chat box and I'll read it for you. Thank you. So Guru Maharaj, while you are waiting, uh, I have a question. Um, uh, for Grastas, what what should be what should we be fearful for of? Like uh, I know you mentioned that you know we should be fearful that uh, uh, we should um, um, our spiritual life is strong and we never fall down. But uh, in Grastas, where you know the families are working and uh, 
they have family responsibilities uh, and many a times when you uh, when you start your devotional uh, you know uh, journey uh, you feel like you don't you do not want to do continue what you used to do you you, uh, you want to you know fall behind your duties and uh, take off your responsibilities it feels like you know krishna said in bhagavad gita that you know you should always perform your prescribed duties but uh, many a times it feels like you know you just want to leave everything but uh, there is also a fear that you know um, who will look after your family so there is always you know a um, dilemma in the in your lifestyle in your things your actions you do so what is your instructions guru maharaj for a grahastha that is not renunciation it's simply to leave everything out of disgust for it renunciation means as rupa goswami says yaryatam upyanja nirbandhe krishna sambandhe anashaktaya visayam yaryatam upyunjate nirbandhe krishna sambandhe yukta vairagya uchchate real renunciation is to use whatever krishna has given to you not only material but your intelligence your words your time your energy in the service of the lord that is renunciation this idea of just leaving everything is uh, where would you go <laughs> you're not going to go back to krishna simply by leaving everything just like the sanatan goswami when uh, he came down with some disease uh he was thinking my body is so abominable and lord shaitani is coming up to me every day and he's embracing me his body is just so abominable so let me let me get rid of this body so he made plans that when the rathi yatra festival which was upcoming would happen he would throw himself under the cart of lord jagannath um of course there is a thing that if you do that you, you go back home back to godhead but probably didn't like that idea and lord chaitanya was very strong against it he said uh he said to sanatan goswami you are a thief you're taking another's property and you're destroying it your body belongs to me i have plans for your body to engage in certain services that i need you so he chastised him for the idea that he was going to commit suicide he did the same thing to marari gupta when he also had that same feeling so uh we should not think oh well this world is so bad and it is it is really bad <laughs> it's what it's made to be it's made to be bad so we don't want to stay here it's not that well now i can just give it all up and krishna will take me back to godhead it's not like that real renunciation is to give up sense gratification and engage in devotional service so that's how you should think and not thinking oh i want to leave everything that's just giving up our our duties and responsibilities presumptuously thank you guru maharaj yes thank you guru maharaj yes that helps yes i mean real renunciation means to engage in devotional service yes guru maharaj yes but yeah uh, many times is it gets very difficult to uh, when when you are doing your grass that um, you know activities you feel like you're not serving krishna but um, and yeah try, the guilt is there try to serve krishna there's a formula for serving krishna try to understand the formula and apply it try to remember to offer whatever you do to him in devotion that is so interesting thank you maharaj thank you thank you yeah it helps um, guru maharaj we have a question from dheeraj prabhu and uh, he is saying hari krishna guru maharaj danvat pranam please accept my humble obeisances during the time of preaching should i take care about the thing that we should 
only preach the boys? Well, you find yourself with a particular audience, then you can you, you preach accordingly. But if you want to make certain programs, you can have, you can arrange for programs accordingly. It's not that we become averse to being in the same place with women, it's just that we are very cautious not to engage in the wrong type of mentality or activity in the association. So if you're preaching, preach, whether you're preaching to men or women or a combination of both. If you feel you're not, if you, uh, if, if you feel you're not strong enough to do that, then you can select an audience to preach to and then preach to that audience. Yes, Guru Maharaj. But during the time of preaching the girls or Mataji, then they get dependent, but more dependent, and uh, they get attracted. So that. So what should we do that the time? Yeah, that happens to all the preachers what to do. <laughs> so a lot of times we we find to to assist us in our preaching, we have other devotees there to help us, and they can deal more with the women directly. If you keep dealing with them directly, then you have to be strong enough not to be victimized by that but that's one should not take that chance yes yes Gurumaraj. yeah because they do become dependent and they see that somebody is willing to listen to them then they become very dependent so yeah have some other devotees with you and make sure you're never alone in that association Yes, Guru Maharaj. That's helped me, Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much. Okay. Hare Krishna. Yeah. We all have that experience. Yes, the dish probably you can go next. Yeah. Hare Krishna Maharaj. <clears throat> Please accept my humble obeisances. All glory to Srila Prabhupada. Uh, thank you, first of all, for uh, for mentioning about Jankinath Prabhu and the qualities. I think that it was quite relevant and uh, a very nice reflection and uh, quite uh, eager to see the book that will come out next year. So thank you for letting us know, Maharaj. And also, Maharaj, this topic of fearlessness, this is very, very important because our test our progress in devotional life is measured by how fearful we become when we are faced with challenging situations materially, uh, challenging situations at work, uh, family-wise, um, and many other things. And we also know, Maharaj, that the, that the surrender to Lord Krishna, the surrender process, how surrender we are, uh, will will determine how how you manage those situations. So I am. I become fearful with those material situations that either happen at work um, or, or other places. And the mind is then full of anxiety. Uh, so on a practical level, we know that we have to surrender to Krishna. Uh, we have to uh, chant. Uh, but how do we deal with those situations as they happen uh, to, be, to, to be not fearful of that situation? And what would help us make what would help us in those situations when it happens, Maharaj? Because we are not, I am not at that level that I can be fear, I can be without fear and, and well, independent. You have to, you have to apply, you have, you, you have to see the situation and apply the formula. And that is um, the proper knowledge of the situation. You should know that no situation can occur without the, without the either the permission or the arrangement of the Lord. So many of these uh, situations to come as a way to test us, even on the material level. And you'll see that 
those who accept the test and uh, try to uh, apply the solution to the situation come out very strong in the end. But um, taking shelter of Krishna when these situations come is the first thing you do. And then you ask Krishna, you know, you pray to Krishna, how, how do I deal with this situation? And then to see, use, use your intelligence. And sometimes you have to leave the situation. Sometimes you have to deal with the situation. Sometimes you can get another person in your place to take you to do to do the situation uh, with who is more capable of sort of solving the problem. So a number of different responses, but the main thing is to depend on Krishna. Because <laughs> here it goes back to the verse itself or the purport, uh, where in Srila Prabhupada mentions that a sannyasi has to be alone. And what, what is this shelter? Just Krishna. Doesn't say anything else, just Krishna. So when sometimes when we are overcome with fear, we also feel alone. It's, it's between us and the fear aspect that comes into our mind. Mm -hmm. And uh, those who are free from fear will always make the right decisions. Fear causes confusion. But a little bit of fear in order to deal with a situation will help you see the situation more clear. We should not be carefree, foolish, whimsical, lackadaisical, or uh, dismissal. We have to face situations in life, but with, with, with the proper uh, mood, depending on Krishna and using your intelligence. I think using depending on Krishna comes first, and then the intelligence comes by way of Krishna's arrangement. Maharaj, in those situations, how do we then surrender to Krishna? Because at that time, the mind is reeling with so many thoughts, so many. Krishna, help. <laughs> When you have to catch those reeling thoughts and stop them and say, Krishna, help. Or, Krishna, how do I deal with this? Pray to your spiritual master. Pray to Krishna. Or use your intelligence to, to, to gather resources that will be helpful in dealing with the situation. That's also part of the whole process. If you run from the situation, you will have to face that situation again. Okay. Yeah, that's how life works. Krishna always puts in front of us some challenges. And if we fail the challenge or run from the challenge, we'll experience that same challenge again, maybe in a slightly different way, but it'll come up again. And that's all part of our spiritual growth. Thank you, Maharaj. I think what, yes, I think your, your initial statement is really powerful, uh, which is the situation has been sanctioned by Krishna. So it is by his, his will that you are in that situation. So I think that's, and it's a yeah, test. He, he, he has what is called a permissive will. He allows things to happen. He doesn't want things to happen or make things happen, but he allows it to happen. It's another feature of his will. So in that situation, then you can see how to, how to grow. But the more you have attachments to a particular outcome, the more you're gonna be fearful because your attachments center around getting your particular outcome. Yes, Maharaj. And that creates the fear aspect. So, um, Prabhupada said, we keep a cool head.
I was just reading in Shamsuddha's book, Chasing the Rhino, part three, the third volume has come out. I was reading it, and Prabhupada was in a situation where it was really quite dangerous, life threatening. You know, some students went wild and, and started attacking the devotees, and Prabhupada was there also. And the students were greater number than the devotees. Prabhupada just simply got up from his seat and just very calmly walked out of the arena and went, and went somewhere else. He didn't get all kinds of fearful or frightened or start yelling or screaming. He just, he just got up and left the situation. And you can see on his face, there's a picture of the situation. He was completely calm, knowing that Krishna is there. <laughs> It's not so easy. I'm making it sound easy. <laughs> we, lo we lost your we lost your You're audio. You're on mute, Prabhu. Uh, sorry, sorry, Maharaj. Um, I think please uh, bless us that when we are in those challenging situations, we remember these instructions because that is the key. Uh, our mind wants to do something else, and I think if we if we have the remembrance at the right time, then then we can. What are you going to do with the what are you going to do at the time of death? <laughs> you better remember Krishna. <laughs> Where else are you going to go? <laughs> yes. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Viva. Viva. Life is what it is. It's a challenge. <laughs> Thank you, Diptesh Prabhu. Namrita Mataji, you can go next. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to you, Maharaj. Uh, sorry, Maharaj, uh, it's late, so I'm not able to uh, turn on my camera. So, um, I mean, okay. I just, uh, all the lights are turned off at my place. I'm, I'm just the only one waking up. So I'm really sorry for that. Uh, That's okay. Okay. Uh, so I wanted to ask. This is a, just the follow up from what you were explaining to Diptesh Prabhuji. Uh, we we many times face repeated patterns or repeated uh, scenarios or situations in life with um, uh, like once in, one incident has had already happened. And then after maybe some years, the same situation ha happens with other, other people. So this repeated kind of pattern, is it because uh, we have not uh, responded to the situation in the way how Krishna wanted us to do that? That's a good, that's a good analysis. Yeah. Generally, we find that life follows us in a certain pattern. And as long as we continue to fail to overcome whatever challenges and obstacles we have, we will continue to get that. It's just the way life is, yeah. And it's all meant to somehow or other help you develop the qualities you need in your devotional service. Sometimes we have to be patient. Sometimes we have to be humble. Sometimes we have to be outspoken. We have, there are things that are needed in our devotional life. And Krishna is sending to us situations where these qualities can manifest. If we fail, then we will see that that same pattern will come up again. It happens all the time. Until we can carefully and very completely overcome the difficulties. And there are some difficulties that you can't 
solve, then that means there may have to be, you may have to change the way you approach the difficulties. Sometimes you have to leave the situation and that's, that's the way to solve the problem. So there are many options to our choices when we're in a situation. But you'll notice that if there's a certain pattern that keeps coming up, obviously you're, you're, being, and you're being tested in order to help you go forward in your spiritual life. Okay, depend on, Krishna says, in all cases, just depend on me. <laughs> yes, Maharaj, I think uh, that clarifies. Thank you. Thank you I, can read you a I can read you a statement by Srila Prabhupada. Mm -hmm. I think I have it right here. Yeah, it's right here. I'm, let me just read it. Always think of the lotus feet of Sri Krishna and you will find no difficulties in executing the task allotted to you by Krishna. And that's an absolute principle. If you remember in Krishna's lotus feet, you will overcome all difficulties in the execution of your devotional service. Yes, Maharaj. I think it's quite clear. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Namrata Mataji. Shridevi Mataji, you can ask a question. Thank you, uh, Satyabhama. Uh, dear Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to you, Guru Maharaj. Um, on the subject of good qualities, I was just reflecting if you could help out a little bit. I find that when I'm stressed, when I'm tired, when I'm hungry, when I'm sleepy, all these things, all my good qualities, whatever little bit there may be, go out the window. I can be patient and tolerant and considerate and kind and everything when I'm doing well. And then when things are not so great, uh, I have no patience, I have no tolerance, I have no thought. <laughs> it's all gone. It's like it never existed. <laughs> so, I mean, uh, it's really, I mean, I want to be consistent in acquiring and having these good qualities. To the degree you're fixed in Krishna consciousness, to the degree you'll, you'll act in the proper way in every situation. <laughs> So you need to strengthen your Krishna consciousness. Yeah. Again, depend on Krishna. Mm. If you're sleepy, get some rest. If you're hungry, eat something. If you <laughs> right. If you're low energy you know, do something. <laughs> yes, get some exercise, you told me. <laughs> and start incorporating all those things. I think being regulated also makes a big difference. Being Having a good routine um, also makes a big difference. Yeah, then the mind is controlled. Okay, thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thanks, Shudevi Mataji. Uh, devotees, um, uh, it's uh, already five o'clock uh, here in UK. Uh, if there is any last question, urgent question, we can, uh, Guru Maharaj can maybe take, otherwise we'll, we can close the call. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. And uh, tomorrow, again, um, Srimati, I'm, I'm assuming, is still online. So yes, take Guru Maharaj. Send Hare out Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Uh, Guru Maharaj, I just want to ask you, um, uh, make sure that uh, there will not be any regular class tomorrow, uh, only this class. This class will go on from uh, 2 o'clock to UK time only. Yeah. Yeah, 2, two to 3.30 UK yeah. time. 
So that's just a half hour before a regular class. Mm -hmm. I think that would be sufficient um, for tomorrow's class. Yes, good morning. Sure, I just want to make sure about that. Thank you so much. Okay. I'll post the link, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Guru Maharaj. So we'll close the call now. Hare Krishna. Okay, thank you very much. My obeisance is to the devotees. Thank you so much for the class, Guru Maharaj. Thank you for the discussion. Yes. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Archana. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Rajiv Vilasiri from Chicago. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you for the class. Namrata, take rest. It's ten, it's it's ten thirty there, right? Yes, Maharaj, it's ten thirty. I'm going to sleep. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Be Devi, take your Geritol and you'll get strong. <laughs> Hare Krishna, uh, Maharaj. Maharaj. I didn't catch that. Sorry, what was that? Uh. Continue to exercise and you'll start seeing your energy re starting to re regain itself. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I will. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Thank Don't you. Be good fearful. You. Don't be fearful. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Vishwa Bhavani. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. 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 Hare Krishna